Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Sema Sally. I work as part of the marketing team here at IIBA, and I will be your moderator. IIBA is an independent, nonprofit professional association serving the global business analysis community. A recognized global thought leader dedicated to elevating the discipline of business analysis, we provide our global community with relevant tools, professional development resources, and networking opportunities. Today, we're going to chat about how to start a career in business analysis, skills and competencies you need to gain or improve, and paths into this high demand profession, whether you have no work experience, some work experience, or you have extensive experience in a specific domain. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the, into the questions tab in your control panel. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session. You can find today's deck um, in the handouts tab. And last, today's webinar recording will be available on IIBA.org in the webinar archive section in five to 10 business days. I'm pleased to introduce today's panelists, Christine Sagris, Laura Brandenburg, and Leslie Mc, uh, McKimber, who is having a little bit of technical difficulties joining us today, but she will join us as soon as she can. And without further ado, let's get started by getting to know our panelists. Christine, let's get started with you. Well, good morning, good afternoon, greetings from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. I'm delighted to be with you today um, to talk about starting a career in business analysis. Um, naturally, we're going to want to start by looking at what is business analysis, and we'll get to that in just a second. So thank you very much, and I look forward to speaking with you today. And Laura, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. My name is Laura Brandenburg. I'm the founder and CEO of Bridging the Gap. Uh, which is an online training company that I founded back in 2011. Specifically, we help mid-career professionals start and succeed in their business analysis careers through online training and key skills and on-the-job career coaching. Uh, my philosophy as a business analyst is pretty very practical and results-oriented. I think the goal of what we do is to create positive change for organizations uh, in a very fun and engaging way. Uh, and all of our programs and what we teach uh, is based on my pretty diverse experience that I had prior to 2011. Uh, I was a full-time business analyst in three different companies. I was a in a director level role overseeing and building from the ground up a BA project management and quality assurance team. And then I went out on my own to start a consulting and contracting practice. Uh, so all of those experiences I bring into what we do at Bridging the Gap, and I'm happy to share advice from any of those experiences today as well. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And I'm going to kick things off with, uh, what is business analysis? Um, let's get started with Christine. I'm sure you get this question. So what's your advice as a program manager at, um, at your university? So thank you for that. I'm happy to speak to that. Um, prior to joining the university, I worked in software development for about 20 years in financial services and worked with business analysts in a wide variety of settings. Um, you know, in the most straightforward uh, technical sense, I would say business analysts are responsible for getting to the question behind the question. What do the stakeholders really need for what they're doing, uh, for what they want to accomplish? So they look at business problems and opportunities they're eliciting what I would call the true requirements to create solutions. And then they translate those requirements into solution documents and instructions for engineers to create those products, whether again, it's software, manufacturing, or even business processes. I think over the last few years, uh, business analysis has been changing and growing. I think it's a very, very exciting area. Um, I think one of the areas it's expanding into is the use of data in looking at those problems and creating solutions. Um, and Laura, did you have anything to add to that? What is business analysis? I'm sure you I do. think that was a great explanation. Yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about who performs business analysis? Can you answer that? Yeah, well, 
you know, obviously business analysts do, right? So people, mm -hmm. not everybody with the title of business analyst, but um, people who identify as part of the profession and who are doing what Christine describes so eloquently. Um, but I also see in my work that a lot of a lot of professionals, like on the periphery of business analysis or business analysts as a role, often are also doing some business analysis. So it could be like a more technical professional who either maybe doesn't have a BA on their team or just has an opportunity to clarify some requirements or is demoing their software and receiving feedback and clarifying requirements with a business user. Uh, it could be somebody in a more functional role like in accounting or marketing who's trying to communicate what they want out of the technology or is actually just improving processes and business functions within their team. They would also be doing business analysis. Uh, and we see a lot of professionals too who are really, who are using the underlying skills of business analysis, like the communication skills, the problem solving skills, the facilitation skills, the kind of creation of buy-in, like it, like those skills are just relevant in all areas of all organizations today. So I feel like those are, kind of, you know, there's a layer of, you know, business analysts in the middle, kind of roles related to business analysis around that, and then still a broad, broader range of where people who are using a lot of those underlying skills, um, but in different job functions in the organization. Yes, for sure. And how would someone uh, get in, into business analysis? Um, well, yeah, what we see a lot is that they get into business analysis because they kind of move in on that circle, right? So they often the experience precedes the title or the role, um, but you can build that experience in those other roles. So how it happened to me, I always like to share my story is I was in quality assurance before I moved to business analysis. And I didn't really ever, I didn't have the goal of being a business analyst and actually our title was systems analyst. It was a little bit more of a technical role, um, but I was asked to apply for a role in the team. And when I looked back at that experience much later in my career, when I started helping other professionals get their start, I realized that like why that happened is I had been doing some business analysis in that QA role. It was a very customer focused, like um, business user focused role. I was doing a lot of what would be called today user acceptance testing. I didn't call it that at the time. And I was I had, had developed a pretty good understanding of the technology too, not as like I could code in that technology, but I understood how it worked and I understood how the business worked. And so that made me a natural candidate to move into a business analyst role. So. What I see is people doing that, like starting to do BA work where they are, starting to demonstrate those transferable skills, and that sets them up to really uh, move into a, a business analyst role. Yes, for sure. And that is the key, right? Having specific domain knowledge and um, just knowing the, the business inside out. Really, specific, more for like new, definitely when you're first getting your start, like as you grow within the profession, you want to be able to move around and like work in different domains and have multiple areas of expertise often. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're getting your start, often your easiest start is in an area that you already have some expertise so that you can have the opportunity to really excel in more of the BA skill set. That's right. All right. And now that we've learned a little bit about our panelists and a little bit about business analysis, I'd like to launch a poll to get to know our webinar attendees. Um, please take a moment to let us know if you have previous work experience or specific domain knowledge. I'll just take a couple of moments here to give everyone a chance to answer. All right, the votes are coming in. 63% of you have voted. And a uh, couple of more moments if you want to weigh in. And I'm going to close the poll with 77% of you have said, yes, I have previous experience 
and or specific domain knowledge and 23% of you have said no. And with that, um, let's explore possible paths into starting a career in business analysis. So if you have no, no previous experience, um, start with familiarizing yourself with some of the basic concepts of business analysis and find out if the practice and profession is a good fit for you. Attending this webinar is a great place to start. Um, reading the BA book, which is the business analysis body of knowledge, um, is, the, is also, it would be the next best step. And this is the global industry standard of business analysis. Next, start building your business analysis network and um, join IIBA, the, uh, which is the only global organization for business analysis. Find a local chapter and attend some of their events and study groups. Get active on social media. And you can also find IIBA endorsed education providers and complete a training course to learn the foundational knowledge of business analysis. And prepare yourself for the entry certificate in business analysis. Complete your application and book your exam. Um, ECBA, um, Entry Certificate in Business Analysis, is business analysis fundamentals for those with no pro prior work experience. And it is useful for professionals who work um, on technology projects or digital transformation initiatives, or to someone who recently graduated, but uh, choice of major may not have enabled them to find a suitable first job. Um, can you think of any other possible paths for someone with no previous work experience, Christine? Well, I'm, I'm really happy to talk about this topic that that 23% who is on the phone. Um, I think it's, I think this is a very untapped resource for business analysts and we've long talked about it. I think the path that Laura just described about being a quality assurance analyst could be a custom, could be a, a support rep or could have been a technical writer. Those are, are well-known paths to becoming a, a business analyst, but the people who I would like to speak to are those people that you sort of talked about at the end, people who got a an undergraduate degree in a number of areas, they're developing skills that can easily be translated to the BA role. So for example, um, a degree in philosophy or logic can help you provide the foundations to be able to draw out those requirements to get to the question behind the question. Um, when you're working with stakeholders and your stakeholder tells you, I want that button to be red, that's their requirement. They think that's their requirement. And it's the VA's role to find out why do they think red is the right color? Are they trying to meet branding standards? Do they think that that maybe contact us red button will um, that will draw the consumer's attention or are they thinking that red means stop and they're trying to save money by having people not click on the contact us button you know what it whatever it is using logic to go to the stakeholder and pull out what what is it that they're trying to get at another degree that could be very very helpful would be english or writing bas are called upon to communicate and write clearly it's very very important they have to take complex ideas and turn them into simple instructions, in some cases, instructions to consumers, in some cases, instructions to engineers. So the ability to write clearly and accurately is very important. Similarly, if some people come out of college with a degree in communication, they felt strongly about it, and they're not quite sure what to do with that degree in communication. I think, Laura, you mentioned this early in your comments about how VAs need to be expert communicators. They might be talking with a division head. They might be talking with the CEO of a company. They might be talking with a software engineer. They might be talking with the marketing department. So being able to hone your message to your audience is a very important VA skill. So while it's very common and, and a wonderful way to become a VA to have domain knowledge, there are, also, there are also other paths by using your formal training in undergrad or graduate degrees. Thank you, Christine. That was a fantastic answer. Uh, next up, if you have some work experience, so this is for uh, the 73% of you um, on the call, um, you would have to demonstrate your work experience. Ensure you have a good grasp of the six business analysis knowledge areas and techniques found in the, in the BA book. 
boost your network with business analysis contacts through attending local IABA chapter events and meetups, join the conversation on IABA LinkedIn groups and access uh, to many more resources through an IABA membership. Next, get certified. If you're a business analysis practitioner with two to three years experience, you may qualify to earn your certification of capability in business analysis, which recognizes your ability to take on, a, um, to take on larger and more complex project responsibility. Um, can you think of any other possible paths uh, with, for someone with uh, previous work experience, Laura? Uh, yeah, I think, um, I just want to actually, I feel like this is a great path that I want to highlight a few pieces of and drill into. Uh, and I also just, when Christine was talking, I wanted to reflect, like, I'm actually a dual major in philosophy and English. <laughs> so I was like, what? what a wonder, right? <laughs> I, left, I left college with this, like, what am I going to do with this degree? And stumbled in, into an editorial role. But I remember writing my first use case and feeling like, I had gone back into that logic class. I'm like, oh, this is how I like apply this logic class that was kind of abstract, right, in a real world business setting to add a lot of value. Um, and so I think that thinking skill set really works really well for a business analyst. So thank you for that, Christine. Um, but I think the really important piece here is you have like demonstrating experience, but like really identifying your transferable skills in business analysis. Right, and I see um, one of the, the mistakes I see people make is kind of undervaluing the, the applicability of their experience. So uh, I, one of the stories I love to tell, I remember somebody who had just joined our use cases and wireframes course and he joined because he's like, I just got asked in a job interview, like if I ever done wireframes and I said no. And then in the, the process of, of showing what a wireframe was, he realized he had done that, he just called it mock-ups, right? And so it was like the same exact skill, the same exact experience that was needed by that employer, it's just was a difference in terminology. And so part of the demonstration we have to do is like, it comes from understanding what's in the, the business analysis body of knowledge, but also when you're looking at the positions out there, doing some research of like, how are those terms actually used? What do they really mean? Can I relate my experience to what's being looked for in, a, in an honest way? Like you don't wanna just wordsmith your resume with a bunch of things that you haven't actually done, but, but a lot of times um, we use words, different employers use words in different ways and the standards are not consistent across employers. So really giving yourself the gift of, of understanding kind of the variety of language and how your experience can apply. Uh, and I would add to that, like I spoke how my QA to BA path, but what we really help people do as well is just start wherever they are at doing business analysis work. So don't wait to get the title or the role or the project or something else. Like there is always an opportunity to do business analysis. So if nothing else, you can analyze the process that you do day in and day out or your team does day in and day out. And that can help you build the experience um, that you can then use to demonstrate, you can use to qualify for the, you know, the higher level certifications as well. Um, and I would also just say the other path that I've seen people do is they go through these three steps and they actually realize once they understand the depth of their transferable skills and experience, they're actually qualified for the CBAP because they have that five years. They just didn't know it. They like built it unaware in a sense. And so they go back and they figure that out from their career background and they are able to really then confidently apply for mid-level and sometimes even senior level BA roles. Oh, fantastic. So you never know. You just have to look at your past experience and see what's uh, what you've done, what you what you could do to build that experience and then demonstrate it essentially. Exactly. And lastly, if you have specific domain knowledge, um, review your existing experience and skill sets, as I just said, to see what skills are transferable into business analysis role and highlight your domain knowledge. And again, ensure you have studied the BA BOC. Um, leverage opportunities to volunteer or shadow a senior BA corporately or through an IIBA chapter to gain a closer understanding of business analysis and complete a training course with an IIBA EEP endorsed education provider and prepare for your certification. Complete your application and book your exam to showcase your capabilities in business analysis. Um, what else, uh, what other paths uh, could there be here for someone with specific uh, domain knowledge, Laura? 
Yeah, what I see work really well with somebody who has a domain, an area of expertise, like whether that's an industry expertise or expertise in like a business application, which would be like salesforce.com or Microsoft SharePoint, or, you know, there's tons of them out there today, is to focus on those roles where that expertise is really valued and the business analysis skill set is also valued. Um, because even though we all love the the profession of business analysis and the skills of business analysis, a lot of employers have the perspective that that industry experience or that business application expertise is, is even more valuable at times. And so it can help you get into a business analyst role um, even without the full business analysis experience. Um, so then you can start building that experience and, and definitely you would still want to get training and, and resources to help you be successful in the VA part of the role, but it allows you to kind of leapfrog right into a business analysis role. That's right. And um, <clears throat> speaking of all this, um, you know, how to get started with sort of uh, like everything ends up leading up to certification to um, so you're, you're, you're recognized for your capabilities. And I'm just wondering um, with our audience attendees here, have you considered certification to get into business analysis? And I'm going to launch our next poll to get your um, response this year. And we've got 55% of you voted already. I'll give you a couple of more minutes, or moments, actually, not minutes. And I'm going to close our poll at, wow, uh, still voting. And 88% of you have said yes. Uh, you have considered certification to get into business analysis, and 12% of you have said no. Uh, and Laura, how can certification help entry-level candidates who have limited to no work experience? Was that the one? I felt like Christine was maybe going to answer that question. I didn't want to steal her. <laughs> I'm happy to answer it, but I'll... You might have... Christine, go ahead. Back and forth. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off, Laura, and then you join in. Um, awesome. You know, you were giving me um, a lot of good ideas when you were talking about the different domain expertise that people can have. I, as I said, I work in financial services. Um, I also work in software development related to insurance. And you can see people come up from being a bank teller, potentially, to other roles in the bank. And then when we're building software for banks, the hiring managers are delighted to have people with that domain expertise come into a BA role. Having a certificate, earning a certificate, is a way of letting employers know that you know what the best practices are. I think um, at the university, the people who we come, for, come in for continuing education and to take these classes, that's what they're after. There are ways to do uh, BA work, I'm gonna call it kind of on the cheap, where you sort of learn by doing, but by going to a formal program, either at a university or at a training center that, that Laura runs and getting the BA certification, I think that can help employers understand the bridge between your domain expertise that you brought up, that you came to either selling insurance, being a, a teller, and then making that link for them that I can be an excellent BA. That's the way I, I see the value of the certificate uh, to the uh, potential employee. Laura, other comments? Yeah, I think um, I was gonna speak more on pre like how people who do have some previous work experience, right? And, and mm -hmm. the value of certifications for them. So the biggest factor that I see professionals in that category face is really it's confidence, right? And so they're looking for the certification to give them confidence. What I think surprises people is how that confidence actually comes to be. Um, one of the ways that I, I received a lot of confidence in sort of the breadth of my skill set was when I did the application for the CBAP. So I, I have my CBAP certification or this, I, I won't 
pretend to re I'll probably screw it up if I try to say it out loud and say the whole thing at this moment. But um, and going through that application process requires that you analyze your past work experience and compare it to the different knowledge areas of the BAEBOC and confirm that you've done it. And I remember being really surprised at how many hours that I came up with and how like I could pull out pieces of my QA role and then I could pull out pieces of my role where I was the director, you know, and, and map that to strategy analysis. So like that just gave me a lot of confidence in how to see the breadth of my career and how that experience had been a theme throughout. Um, and also going through the preparation process by reading the BAEBOC and absorbing the BAEBOC. And you know, again, it's about kind of mapping your experience to it so that it's not just this prep so that I can pass the exam, right? And I know and passing that exam actually requires that you internalize what's in there in a way that you can reflect that back in, a, in a, like an applied way, at least for the CCBA and CBAP, um, because they do require work experience. So there's a lot of confidence that comes from that sort of study and preparation. Um, and then of course, having the credential gives you the dot, you know, the thing at the end that showcases all that work that you did. Uh, and so that's how I see a lot of times um, the certification play a big role for people in terms of making the transition. Absolutely. And how would someone select the right certification for them, Laura? Yeah, I often advise, um, you know, you, 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 it's based on your, your work experience. So that's the really primary differentiator between the three certifications. So that entry level being does not require any work experience in business analysis, the CCBA requiring two to three years, and the CBAT five years or more. So you want to go for, I believe, the highest level certification that you can qualify for. So that's going to be driven by the work experience, which is why both building the experience and identifying that transferable experience in your career background, those are both such important parts of the certification process. Mm, that's right. And one another question for our um, audience. Why are you interested in business analysis? So we've got career transition, career advancement, career options, and other. Just a couple of more moments. And I'm closing the poll with, so 29% of you are interested in business analysis for, uh, for career transition. 42% of you for career advancement, 23% of you for career options, and 6% of you other. That's really good to know. So majority of you are uh, interested in business analysis for career advancement. So with that, I wanted to um, ask the next question to our panelists. How should um, someone list, list certification in their uh, on their resume if uh, they're looking for a career advancement and to showcase their uh, business analysis skills? Um, Laura, did you want to take that one? Sure, sure. Um, what I see working really well to get it on the top is to within like the two to three sentence summary that you put at the top of your resume, say certified or CBAP certified or CCBA certified, like really mention it um, in that first sentence of your summary. And then of course you wanna have it in your knowledge or skills or certification section, which would usually be at the bottom. You could also include it in an achievement section if you happen to have that. Um, but again, also after you go through that application process, you might have a whole different understanding of your experience. And so make sure you've got that experience captured in your work experience section as well. Awesome. And are employers looking for certified individuals when they're looking to fill a job? Christine, what do you think? What do you see out there? Well, I think, again, I, I, I'm going to speak a bit to the people who are either in transition or just starting out. 
we have a certificate program at our university where people take a number of classes leading up to being able to take their CBAP or, or other certification exams with IIBA. And what I tell them is I tell them from the time you start with us, I think it's very important that you put in your LinkedIn profile or on your hard copy resume that you're working on a certificate especially on LinkedIn or, well, it's true also for, for hard copy um, resumes because bots are looking at your resume. And it's good to have the word certificate or certification in your, um, in your credentials. So, for example, on LinkedIn, there's a section called licensing and certification. And I have screenshots that I send out to our students and say, University of Wisconsin, business analysis certificate in progress and have an estimated completion date. We don't want to tell them to put CBAP when they haven't taken the exam, but to say that you're working on a certificate and this is in progress, I think that this is going to attract employers. And if they have um, uh, digital means to look over resumes, your resume is going to pop up, your profile is going to pop up with that information. If it turns out that it takes you longer to do a certificate, adjust the date, but show that you're working on it, show that you're taking it seriously. I think it's really important. All right. And um, what career options um, does someone have in business analysis or what career opportunities do you see out there? Um, Laura, do you wanna start with this one? I mean, there's so many, right? I think there's so many that it can be overwhelming too to people. Um, so they look at the variety of roles in kind of the, the tree, right? I think um, I was on a webinar recently where uh, the former CEO, the CEO talked about the tree, right? Of all of these different specialties and all of these different things. And like, they're all coming down to the trunk of business analysis. And I so, actually have a copy of that tree. Sorry to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you have a copy of it. It's a be it was a beautiful slide. It was such articulated, such a like dilemma and opportunity in our profession, right? So um, the idea, though, being that if you try to focus on all the piece, all the leaves, right, you could be an overwhelm of how do I specialize in all of these different things, um, and that's not necessarily. A, but that's not a productive path, but the trunk of business analysis leads you to all those different things. So mm -hmm. some of them are data analysis, digital transformations, Ben mentioned, right? Specialists in a business application, generalist BAs, consultants, um, people more on the systems or technical side are just a few that come to mind, but there's really just such a wide variety. Yeah. And um, since you mentioned the tree, I thought I would bring it up for those curious about what you were referring to. Um, and perhaps you can tell us a little bit about uh, what oh, what the speaker that you were listening to mentioned about the tree. Right. Well, kind of what we, yeah, I'm glad I got it right and remembered the trunk was business analysis, <laughs> but like this shows some of the variety of like what you can do with those core skills. Um, in terms of a professional role, right? And so there are, are so much, there's so much variety here. It's not like it just opens up one option for you. Um, mm -hmm. And you, what we see, you know, you're gonna start in one option and you wanna choose an option that really calls to you, that suits your passion, that you're gonna enjoy. And then as you grow, you can grow by continuing to go up in that specialization, or we also see people making lateral moves in between these specializations where they're leveraging that trunk to do something new and different and really broaden their experience. That's right. Yeah. This is a wonderful, wonderful tree. <laughs> a lot of opportunities. Yeah, and um, I would just like to second that as well. Um, I think that this is a really exciting time to get into business analysis because of all those leaves on that tree that you just saw. Um, and I think that as different metho methodologies come along, some of you may have heard about um, agile development or agile methodologies, methodologies. and part of that um, framework has to do with team and people operating um, in different ways on the same team to play to all the skills. I, I happened to look up earlier this week 
um, some of the terms that were on those leaves that you had in that tree, just to see, you know, how many jobs. And I saw over 100,000 jobs in the U.S. using Glassdoor, and that's one of my favorites. I saw over 100,000 jobs related to business analysis in the U.S. So there are plenty of opportunities. It's definitely an open and growing field. Absolutely. Um, so I, 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 I highlight one more thing here too, because I do like I, I love the tree and all the roles within business analysis, but I also there's also the other path, like what Christina and I are on, very different ways of approaching training and education, but that is another way to leverage your business analysis experience and kind of an opportunity that it opens up for you um, so whether that training in your own and like training in business analysis or developing a program or working for a university or building your own company um, i can say like being a business analyst has made me a better business owner uh, and i'm also seeing a trend with other entrepreneurs i i have that are with similar size companies, like smaller companies that are growing, needing business analysts because they don't know what their processes are. They start to hire a few people on their team and it's like everything kind of goes to chaos, right? Because it's like they need that business analysis skill set to manage that. Um, and there's a role there too, I think, for, for people who want to maybe work in a more entrepreneurial environment, but maybe don't want to own their own company to do either some consulting or um, have, a, have a role in some of those smaller companies as well. That's right. Um, so I'm sure our audience is um, itching to get some of their questions in. So I'm going to uh, take some time for some Q&A now. Um, and just a reminder, please type your questions into the question box in your control plan panel um, if you have any questions that you would like our panelists to answer. So I'm just going to take a peek now um, into our question box. Um, all right, so I have, this question is from Katharina, uh, Katharina, I have extensive healthcare billing experience, but no degree. Is it possible to become a business analyst? So no, uh, I'm assuming okay. that's no bachelor's. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Christine. Well, I'll tell you, in general, I would say a business analyst should have a bachelor's degree. I think that's the most common, it's kind of understood. That being said, one of the best uh, BAs that I know and someone who went on to be a product owner um, at a financial services company, um, she doesn't have a bachelor's degree, but she proved her worth and she is terrific at bringing teams together, drawing, bringing out the requirements uh, um, and being able to communicate with all parties involved. I mean, I think she's particularly gifted. I do think it's possible. It's great to start out with a bachelor's degree. I, I think people kind of assume it. I think if you, I think it might be a little hard to get started as you know, just off the street doing. I think you mentioned hospital billing that you you're doing. I can see an area where they might take you on a pro. They might take you as a BA on a project for working on a billing system because you might know so much about that. So that's the way you would go at it. I think you'd want to stick really close to your domain expertise. Maybe work on the bachelor's on the side would be an idea. Laura? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, there are always some employers that hire without a bachelor's. And there are some opportunities that you will just get filtered out from because you don't have the bachelor's and it's just part of the requirements of how that company hires. So I think if you really are against going back to getting your bachelor's or want to get started before you can finish your bachelor's, right? it's like seeking out those employers that don't have it listed in their job requirements and aren't filtering for it. Um, like you, I have hired a, a business analyst who didn't have her bachelor's. I kind of, it's not something I screened for. And so I was kind of surprised to learn about it after the fact. She was quite honestly, one of the best VAs I ever hired. So um, it's definitely possible to excel in the role. It's, it's getting past that initial filtering that can be a challenge. And it probably is one of those instances where getting a cert certification can be even more important because then they'll understand that you have those best practices. So in that case, certification yep. may be even more important. Yeah, that sounds um, 
like it, it could help them um, stand out in, uh, amongst the competition and our applicants in that way. Um, next question I've got from Jess Kieran. I have 13 to 14 years experience in, in software development, but have not had a formal BA role. What uh, certification should I focus on, ECBA or CCBA? Um, what do you think, Laura? In this case, this sounds like a transition. Yeah, I, I would look at what experience you can pull and i believe it's the last 10 years so look at the last 10 years and see if you can pull a piece a segment of that into business analysis so it really does require understanding the full breadth of what is covered in the BABOC and what a business analysis does and what the different techniques are um, you could start with just the techniques section of the BABOC and start scanning through it and being like, gosh, have I ever done root cause analysis? Like probably as a software developer, right? Have I ever <laughs> facilitated this, right? Like, and you, you don't, you, it, you want to really look at, at that experience in more, in more depth and give yourself the benefit of, of doing that. Um, and then decide if you can pull together that experience in an honest way, then I would go for the CCBAT or sorry, CCBA and otherwise stick with the ECBA. All right. Um, and Christine, this is a similar question again um, from Itahan. I have 12 years plus experience in financial services industry in sales and customer experience. I want to move into the BA space. Um, is it wise to take a one year certificate course in business analysis at the university? Do you think this is a good move? I, I definitely think it could help you bridge the, you know, bridge the role, changing roles. It sounds like you've got great uh, domain expertise, and it would be really, really valuable as you build systems for software processing companies. There's a lot of global companies that you could be working for, either in the U.S. or just really anywhere, um, and that's hard to come by. So I think if you paired that with a program, does it have to be a year? I don't know what the right number of years are. The, the courses that we have at our university, people typically complete in six months, but we allow them to take up to four years to complete the courses. Some have to do with finances, some have to do with employers. So I don't know what the right, you know, the quantitative amount of training you should get, but qualitatively knowing the BABA taking those exams, I think would definitely go a long way to demonstrate that you can handle a BA role. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christine. Next question is from Jeffrey. Um, to become more comfortable with BA terminology and understanding, I'm starting with ECBA certification and then working towards CCBA and finally CBAP. Would this be recommended even if you have numerous years of work experience or should I go towards CCBA or CBAP instead of the of ECBA? Yeah, I would I would um, stick with my advice of, of go start as high as that you can qualify for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I don't it, think there's any, it, and maybe there's an IBA perspective that's different on this, but I don't think there's any need to like progress through them. No, um, they're really representing different levels of of experience, and if you've got extensive experience, then you want to start as high as you can. Exactly. And for all certifications, you would need to go through the uh, BA BOC um, anyway. So it might as well, if your experience qualifies, you go for the highest one um, and you would get familiar, familiarized with the terminology and understanding regardless at what level you start. Um, and the next question is from Rinalda. Many companies are transitioning to Agile. Which certification is more valuable to employers, ECBA or IIBA um, AAC certification? Um, Laura, do you have? Yeah, um, I, I'm honestly not 100% sure on that one because I know the Agile certification is relatively new mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how well that's accepted by employers yet. I know that I do hear like employers looking for either an agile product owner or agile scrum master certification. Um, so you might look at, you know, if you're really focused on the agile space, those are going to be the certifications that might get you in the door 
and then complementing that with the BA skill set and certification as well. Yes, um, I think you got it right at the very end there. So the IIBA ACC certification is more about augmenting uh, your business analysis skills. So it would be wise to start with the core uh, business analysis skills. Um, so going for your ECBA and then augmenting those skills with an um, agile analysis certification to prove that you can perform business analysis in an agile context. So that would be the progression there. Um, and next, Teresa, uh, going for the high certification makes sense. However, I was advised to go for the ECBA. Oh, I'm, we may need more context for this one, Teresa. So we will address that question through email. Hold on, I'm just going for the next one. Um, All right, there's a lot of domain, past domain experience. Um, and I feel like we've answered a lot of the questions already with the previous uh, uh, questions because they're very similar on the same note as to which certification to go for. So just give me a moment to find the next one that uh, doesn't feel like a repeat of another. Hmm. So what about for someone who's had a gap in their work experience? This uh, question is from Sheena. I have six years of experience in SAP HR, a SAP HR consultant, and I have had a gap of 2.5 years um, um, in their work history. I'm interested in being a BA and start a career in IT field. Um, I'm based in UK, so have completed the BCS Business Analysis Foundation course. However, I find that it is difficult or quite challenging for me to, uh, to get considered for jobs as uh, I've had that gap. Please advise uh, what I should, uh, what I can do next to uh, to get selected. I'm ha I'm happy to answer that one. Uh, Go ahead. So, yeah, what I have seen people with a gap, um, and if one, you need to have a reason for the gap, right, and be really clear in your head that it's like this is just something that I either chose in my life or that happened in my life, and like not have any like mindset stuff around it, right, <laughs> and not see yourself as less than. Like you have to, it's that's the confidence piece that you really need to bring, and it needs to be brought like when you put together your resume, when you interview, and everything like. I could start this tomorrow, right? So part of it is like, what do you need to do to be in that internal mindset that you're confident in starting whatever that next role is for you? Um, and then you want to look and start to really leverage, look at the roles that leverage like that SAP experience, that HR experience, so that you're bringing that domain knowledge forward. Um, and I would say another way to start to address that gap in your work experience uh, is through volunteering. So going to a local nonprofit or working with a small business that you might know and analyzing some processes for them, doing some business analysis work for them. And then what you do is you put that on the work experience section of your resume. You can put it as a business analyst consultant or something like that. And so you've essentially alleviated and eliminated and you still have the gap, but now you have recent work experience too, which can often get you into those conversations. And I will just tell you the same person that I interviewed um, that I hired that didn't have her bachelor's also had a pretty significant career gap and it didn't come up in the interview because when I would ask her experience based questions about like things that she had done she answered those questions as if that had happened yesterday right so she had she didn't have this like oh, you know there was like it was a long time ago and I don't really remember I've interviewed people like that and that does not go over well it was like oh right like there were these three people in the room and we had this challenge and I so like part of it is also just getting back into your experience and really refreshing it so that you can talk about it in a very present way um, where an employer is not even going to be asking you about your gap because they're so excited about what you can bring to their organization all right, thanks, Laura. Um, and Christine, if you could get, uh, if you could take this question from Mohammed, mi uh, what is the min minimum time required for preparation for ECBA? 
I think it is going to vary by by person um, how much time you put in uh, to it. I I think that many people spend a couple of months working on it. Depends is it you know full time part time. Um, What's your work experience? What work experience are you bringing to the preparation? Even though you're not required to have a certain number of hours to be able to take the exam, what are you sort of hooking that knowledge onto? Um, I don't know, Laura, do you have any more specific thoughts on how long it takes to prepare for it? It's so variable by person. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, when I prepared for my CBAP, that was about a three month process, but that was pretty intense. Um, yeah. But no, we don't, we don't, um, we don't offer certification prep in our organization. And so I haven't really dealt with that very in depth. I guess it would depend on how fast someone can go through the BA bog and really uh, feel confident that they, they, they know, like they, they've um, retained the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the BA bog is over, how many pages is it? <laughs> Meg, <laughs> I have to say I certified certified against version two, which I'm I'm grateful for. It, it got mm -hmm. almost twice as good between version two and version six. So version three, uh, if I may, it's about um, almost 500 pages, but that includes the glossary. <laughs> which but I think to what makes too. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I think makes it easier to internalize some of the content rather than just page by page memorization is so you have something to hook it onto. So if you're able to go to free webinar, if you're not working as a BA, but you're able to go to webinars on the topic, if you're able to go to gatherings, in our area we have things called meetups and in the evening people get together to talk about different topics. I think the more you can expose yourself to the terminology, to the work, to the people, and in many areas, there's a lot of free activities that you can go to, and I think that would be great. Or start discussion groups, join parts of LinkedIn that are um, related to the BA world and the software development world, if that's what you're interested in. You know, the more ways you can immerse yourself along with studying the text, um, I think it'll make it easier and, and faster for you. For sure. And a lot of the local IBA chapters have study groups um, that you can join. And again, not only grow your network, but then you can you can just make it more fun uh, preparing for your ECBA. Yeah, I will also say one thing that was really helpful for me was to um, invest in an exam simulator because it helped me see where my so I you can often when you do them you can go by knowledge area, so you can do the kind of study that you think you should do for the first knowledge area, and then you can take an exam simulator just on that knowledge area. And then you can see how well that kind of prep is preparing you for that exam, right? And then that helps me find gaps in my prep that then I could go back and review that knowledge area. But I also then understood as I was preparing for the next knowledge areas what I actually needed to be paying attention to in order to pass the exam successfully. All right. Um... And let's see here. The next question I have is from Nimi. Could I know how a project manager is different from a business analyst? Which one of you ladies would like to take this one? <laughs> I'll take initial shot at it. I'm sure Laura will have some color to add. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this, it's, it's very organizationally um, dependent how they divide up those roles, especially in today's world with different uh, methods that are being used for development. I think that typically the business analysis is getting at defining the issues. What's the business problem? What's the business opportunity? And figuring out the requirements behind the requirements and um, translating those into instructions for the rest of the team and communicating to those around the team. Those are the essential BA skills in my mind. The project manager is a bit more in charge of the overall schedule. That's how I look at it, keeping the trains running on time, um, making sure that they have um, the right people in the right roles on the team, um, and may do some of the communications um, in resource planning with other project managers. They may, um, they may report to a development director. 
So it's a little bit more of the global picture, the organizational skills to just keep things rolling. Um, and I think the BA, on the other hand, is more about the content. That's, that's my view of it. What do you think, Laura? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I would say the other piece, like where they overlap is like with the scope, right? And so mm -hmm. um, where part where there can be tension, like a healthy tension between the VA and the, and the PM is like as the VA, you often want to solve a bigger slice of the problem. And as a PM, you're very concerned with, are we going to make this on time and on budget? Like, what's our budget and our resources? What piece can we actually achieve in the time that we have? And then when you bring those two perspectives together, like, what's mo like when the BA is like, this is what's most important. This is going to add the most value to the business. This is what we need to be solving. And this is what we can do. And like, these are what our project constraints are, right? And you can end up with a solution scope that really has a, a much more significant ROI than if either one of those perspectives sort of gets to run the show. Thank you. Um, that was That's definitely a question that uh, comes up a lot, actually, for a lot of people. So thank you for clarifying that. And we have about five minutes left until the end of our webinar. And I just wanted to end it with this um, question by Hannah. And I think it's the perfect question to end the webinar with. What is your favorite part of being a BA, Laura? Oh, that's a great question. Um, when I started my business analysis career, like I felt like I had arrived. Um, I had been frustrated and my QA role was kind of fun, but my, the role I had before that bored me to tears. And I kind of had this sense of like, what did I go to school for to be doing this administrative role that was not using my full capabilities? And so what I loved about business analysis is that it stretched me and it allowed me to be like, use my intellectual capabilities, my ability to communicate to, and I, I just love the work. Right. And I, I still love the work. I love teaching the work more than I love doing the work now. But, you know, that was what drew me into the profession is that this was a fun role to fill. I got to solve new problems every day. It, no day was the same. Um, and I th there was a lot of variety to it. I, there definitely is. And there's a lot of variety coming up as uh, the business analysis profession and practice is growing. Yeah. I saw in the tree, <laughs> which by the way, I saw a lot of you inquired uh, if you could get the slide. We will um, definitely send it out to those of you interested via email following the webinar. Um, please give us at least two to three uh, business days to get uh, back to you with those um, with the answers to your questions and um, and uh, sharing the slide. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Christine, for answering the questions. Uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, I would like to wrap up with a great summary from a Business Analysis Foundations course on LinkedIn Learning by Angela Wick, a well-known BA instructor and author. Business analysis competencies are a mix of creative, analytical, relationship, communications, facilitation, and leadership skills. That's definitely a lot and it keeps it interesting and exciting I'm sure. <laughs> business analysis is critical in today's organizations. These skills that business analysis need can be developed in a lot of different roles and taken to another level as a BA. Great BAs with advanced competencies provide a tremendous value to projects, teams and the organizations and there's always room to grow more whether you hold the BA title or not. Thank you Angela for this uh, for that great summary. And there's no doubt the growth of business analysis discipline and practice is expanding across the globe. And there I say it's taking over the business world. Um, the future of business analysis is bright and so is yours in this exciting and rewarding career path. Good luck um, uh, to all of you in this webinar on your business analysis journey. Thanks again for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.